It's like identifying the worst player in a World Cup championship. There you go. Yeah, the Spanish women. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, you lot, who's the crappiest? It's like, you won. <laughs> it was great. But we need one of you to like throw off the team. Yeah. <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> I think it's sometimes the same in like organizations, HR, like annual review thing, which is one of the things that oh, I wow. do not miss from working on my own, which was always a, oh, <laughs> a right pain for whenever you do it. But it's always like whether you're like doing it as a manager and rating your people, you know, trying to arrange the people beneath you or doing it for yourself and trying to bun fight for a salary raise. It's just like, oh, it's just, it's just not a great way to sort out people i don't think it's just like a one to five scale rating and then you like end up with like well not everyone can be a four there's too many fours so you need to make some of your people three you're like well which ones they're like well i don't know you need to decide it's like well like, i have decided you asked me what i thought of them and i told you and now you disagree with me so you need to decide surely rather than just telling me to change my opinion it's just what? like oh it's just like the steel what cage the death match of organized yeah. people management. Well, one of the organizations I was working for, they used to do a bell curve. Yeah. And, you know, to do the bonuses. Yeah. Fit them oh, in, this yeah. many people are not going to get bonuses. This many people are going to get bonuses. Like everybody in my team performed. Mm. But I can give, give everyone a bonus. Yeah. I can yeah. only give bonus to a certain number of people. And then, so what I had to do, because everybody was performing, they were doing such a good job. This I will we'll just I literally tell them, look, this this quarter I'm gonna give bonus to this 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 person. <laughs> Next quarter I'm gonna give bonus to this 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 other person it, because they all did a wonderful job. They should all, all we delivered everything on time. We you know we we, did, we went live without any bugs. We just well I mean a couple of bugs but not like uh, my yeah. system doesn't turn on kind of bugs. Mm. So, yeah. uh, it was all like P4s and, you know, it was all a uh, couple of glitches here and there, nothing major. And But I couldn't give bonuses to everyone. I had to, like, work out yeah. who's so going to get bonuses. particularly for. evil scheme, right, called top grading, and lots of big corporates use it. And it's what you're describing with the bell curve. And often, yeah. you know, people on the right are up for promotion and your top stars and people from the left are, like, for firing or getting no bonus and all that. Yeah. And it, it's, just, it's just a horrible thing to be in that room and to, to be doing that conversation, you know, everybody's a three, okay. And you've got, it's not just the who's done really well that is rubbish, that we have to say hasn't done so well. It's the other way up as well. Who's average that we, who, it's like, well, nobody's been amazing, but we have to have at least one amazing person. It's like, really? <laughs> it doesn't, you think about it, in any yeah. other industry, if you have like a Formula One team and imagine you've got like, Right, the people in the pits, and you got the driver and all that, and you're going, well, we've 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 kind of won the you know like awards this season. We've been amazing. We've like won every race. Oh, we still need somebody shit here. <laughs> Who is it? Yeah, the shit, Jeffrey. the amazing, the crappiest of the amazing. It's it's like it's just wrong, isn't it? We succeed as a team, but a lot of these processes only cater for the individual, and it's like treating individual sheep. It's like that's a particularly woolly sheep. I <laughs> know the flock's lovely, but we don't think about you know teams and team performance and rewarding team performance. And I really think that's what a lot of companies miss out like, on nowadays. Yeah. We, we, you know, it's about mm -hmm. we're just. I say we. I say you've got the corporate level that makes its money, and then you've got people as resources. And I think that that we try and separate them. We do the Adam Smith like pin factory you know, redu reducing things down to specific little pots, treating people like, you know, fungible rip resources. It's like, oh, we, we have one developer today and we can get rid of that one and bring another one in. They're exactly the same and they fit with the team the same. And it's not like that. We we kind of lose so much stuff. But, uh, yeah, hopefully yeah, It's more like identifying more. the worst player in a World Cup championship. There you go. Yeah, the Spanish women. Like it's like, okay, you lot, who's the crappiest? It's like you won. It was great. But we need one of you to like throw off the team. Yeah. 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 One of you isn't gonna get paid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you won't get your medal. Your pay rise. <laughs> yeah. You're one as a team, but hey, one of you. Yeah. But it's tricky, isn't it? I and mean, then yeah, I I completely agree with everything you're saying. And then also I like flip and think of it. Come at a different angle. It's like most organisations, 
do have a lot <laughs> do have a lot of waste. So they're like twenty percent of people are probably doing eighty percent of the work. Yep. Anyway, to just like yeah. keep things going. So it's just like you, you need a way of like there's going to be people that want to get promoted and you know you want to keep around. It's like cool. We need a process to identify that. There's going to be people that just shouldn't be working there, like they're not a good fit yeah. or they don't like it, and you know should be getting to rid of them. But to do all of that through like an annual process of like having to fit people in when actually the majority of people are just doing fine and just want to get paid, yeah. you know, in line with inflation. And then the company's making loads of money and like it seems, seems like there should be without going full communism should be some, some way of just sharing the benefit when you're doing well and like saying, look, we've all done a bit, you know, the company's done a bit shit when when things yeah. haven't gone so well. And again, it's back to that good boss just being a bit frank of like, look, the company's done really well. You can have some money. The company's done quite shit. Wasn't it? Probably wants to yeah, be yeah. with you if you're still here because otherwise we'd have got rid of you already. So, you know, we, we just don't have enough money to go around right now. But I think yeah. people could buy into that if like it was a bit more honest and a bit more... I think it goes back to how we reward yeah. people. I had yeah. a developer, amazing developer. He didn't want to become senior developer. He just wanted to code. That's all mm. he wanted to do. Poor guy had to move teams <laughs> every, you know, every so often so he doesn't get promoted because he was so good at what he did. He just didn't <laughs> want to be a senior developer. They kept telling him you have to be a senior yeah. developer. He's like, I don't want to be a senior developer. And no. there was another guy I couldn't get rid of because it was so bad. But he, because he'd been in the organization for nine years, he was part of the furniture. He just, yeah. I couldn't get rid of him no matter yeah. what I tried to do. Um, so what I, you know, so the way I, we removed him from the team because he was he had some issues as well. I'm not gonna say it here. Um, let's just say he wasn't very nice to other people from ethnic backgrounds. Um, but I couldn't get enough evidence to get rid of him because of it. Um, I had it, but there wasn't enough. Um, it, we, I had to promote him to another team. I made him a senior developer so he can leave my team, so he can let my team have <laughs> harmony and peace. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's it was just madness. I just, I just couldn't get it's rid of it, no matter what. But, yeah, but so it, but it's, it's, it's the, the policies, right, and <laughs> processes that are there to kind of protect from the abuses of management and all that sort of stuff to try and introduce some kind of fairness, then take away from having those honest conversations with people. You know, you can't say actually you're a bit rubbish. You know what I mean? Without going down a whole bullying manager doesn't like me, all that kind of stuff. It's really hard to, because most jobs, particularly knowledge work jobs, right, are really hard to to, to measure in any kind of way, right? They, they just mm. really are. So it, it often boils down to how much you like the person, right? And you've got to try and steer away from that because everybody's got an opinion on the value of the work they've done. And it's really difficult. So, but but you're you're absolutely right that those kind of top grading things can work when you've got some rubbish people that just aren't performing, and some great people. But when you're forced into having that, the both ends, you know, it, it, that's when it's hard having a number. You need really to be able to say, yeah, everybody's all right. <laughs> Most people are all right. You know, we got one over there. Oh, it's not a very good bell curve, is it? In fact, loads of people have been amazing. It's some weird graph now, not like a bell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like a camel, or like a straight line, <laughs> or a straight line. But there's got to be something. Yeah, I guess we're well intentioned, but our execution of these things comes with unintended consequences constantly. Mm. That's that. we want to we want to we want to reward the good work, but we just don't know how to do it at most organisations. That's the problem. Well, at least they don't know how to measure good work. <laughs> in, yeah. a, in a way, it is how do we measure good work? I mean, one good one good measure would be how well were they with other team members. You know, how do you measure that? Find a way to measure. You know that 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 you know how, oh, how well three sixty feedback, know. Ali. Don't, don't you know what I mean? Where you get these like sycophantic, fantastic love loops where you go, <laughs> you give me feedback and I'll give you great feedback. It's like no, no. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm I'm not giving you feedback because you gave me terrible feedback. So you know, I've been really good. Yeah. I helped you loads, and you've been rubbish. <laughs> like, so, we can't have those conversations at all. You know, it's yeah. it's like we have these like kudos emails where I'm at the minute like coming out and, and a lot of them are amazing and, and there's a lot of unsung. So the general principle I'm totally with, you know, we need a way to call out unsung heroes. Absolutely do across an organization. 
but again it's that that you know what constitutes like going above and beyond or just doing your job to an acceptable level you know as in is doing 80 hours a week worthy of getting one of those kudos things like oh great work well done you've got no family (laughs) you know what i mean and your personal hygiene's bad but well done on working 80 hours a week (laughs) it could be a conversation starter (laughs) you'll you'll, you'll take that and he's like how do we make sure you don't do 80 hour weeks well that's the thing i think that the the whole dialogue is is kind of wrong it's got to be sustainable for the people right it's got to be right for people in the in your teams you know the difference is most uh, my team at the moment most organizations work on the you're lucky to be here kind of narrative it's like yes you're lucky to have a job look at all those starving africans or whatever but they don't have it's, it's like no that's a stupid analogy right the company is lucky to have really good employees so that's the thing if you want to be a really good employee you'd be a really good employee anywhere let's let's like turn that model upside down and not punish you for like bad performance reward you for good performance you know in fact make it all about you being engaged in what you're doing i think that that's really a Hmm. a sales teams usually do it the most right where i'm just thinking of like you know celebrating unsung heroes where like the whole sales force you know goes out hires a massive venue hires like you know comedians bands disco no one else in the company can do it apart from sales so then everyone else feels bad unless you're in it and they think yeah cool I'm, i've made it into the sales team <laughs> so that's kind of bad but then they get it the most right it's like they're doing awards you know to celebrate all the successes they had in a year and you know got different ones to different things but like the main one is the people's champion it's like voted for by the people that's like who do you think's the best and it's like the better a better way of doing 360 feedback i think because 360 feedback always like ends up in a tech tool you're like filling in a, a, a wanky word document that gets sent around and filled in it's like oh my gosh this is terrible whereas like you know people are voting it's all anonymous and then you, you know that person's yeah. like oh you know and it usually is the right person you're like yeah I, yeah actually they deserve that yeah I think you're right with anonymous feedback. That would be because, yeah, I I guess it comes back to how good people are to work with, how, you know, how much you trust them, you know, how much you value their skills. And, you know, they're the things that really matter, you know, not making Mm. a lot of of noise on a certain thing, but but how much they they generally contribute to an organization. Yeah, it's and I think that works in the in the kind of the military. I think that's how they, you know, they select people in their teams. You know, okay, they get the awards for the, you know, uh, really valiant thing. But I think strong teams are built by, you know, trust and, you know, having your back and all that kind of stuff. That's probably not so seen in corporate world. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, a lot of my friends are in the army, actually. And uh, yeah, it just made me think of Jocko Willink that does a, does a podcast that's like a US Navy SEAL guy. And he's like, look my leadership is once we're actually into the battle bit i just i don't say anything apart from just go because everyone knows what they need to do it's yeah. like all of the work is like doing that beforehand and like making sure that they're, they're ready to to just follow that that simple instruction and um yeah another thing i like about the army is like again just being really honest they're like look the organization is first we need to support the queen and country or whatever yeah the, the you know whatever King they support now. for each country but the, yeah the a very very close second is is the people and you know what's good for you but like you are not top like the top is the is the the good of the organization and that is what most profit organizations actually do behave like but then they all say oh we put our people first like no you can't you can't possibly stop saying it they don't believe you no they don't believe you because you made those people redundant so if they were first you wouldn't have made them redundant yeah yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It is all about, you know. But if you're just honest, then it's like, cool, I can get behind that. It's like, yeah, I know when, you know, th- there's some things that work well, out outside of our control. But like after that, then then people are first. Cool, I can get behind that. Yeah. Don't get me onto corporate values, though. You know, the number of companies <laughs> that have integrity in their values. And it's like, really, if you could double your profits by being a bunch of bastards, would you? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and get away with it. Yeah, we probably would. Like, you know, yeah. it's just like, okay, it's well-meaning and it's nice, but I don't think that is what people, like employees, connect with. I don't think they mm. go, I want to go to company X because we have integrity. It's like, well, 
It's just like, it's just not. Well, it's all the, no, but a tangible thing. So it says they're trustworthy. You like ultimate, or automatically think they're not trustworthy. <laughs> <Yeah>. Quality work. <laughs> quality iron among the well, yeah. quality. Uh, you know, but uh, there, there are definitely some good ones, but there is there are a lot of generic, just awful, like corporate values and and you need to see them from the exec you need to but i think that these things should be applied i think that like the application of these things like service if you're a supermarket might translate into we provide great service to the local community and that's kind of measurable you can go hey community do you think we provide good service but service is an abstract service to one another service to you ser somebody serving everybody you know but i think yes respect Okay, define respect when you're putting me on that shit graph and saying that I'm like a rubbish yeah, yeah. That's not respect. That's rubbish. Yeah. So I, I think there's, there's there's a lot of these, but I think there's a lot more that companies can do about helping their employees connect with like the place in the world. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like if you're a bank, you know, yeah, we make loads of money, but we're especially keen on helping people to be financially you know skilled or have uh, you know responsible mature and understand you know we do a bit like that we have support like we support on bank that supports entrepreneurs or whatever problem is they all try and be everything and they don't uh, and i don't think it helps you connect your people that work with you if you're just like a broad yeah we're everything with weak values i think we, we need to you know yeah that's got me onto corporate strategy as well which is an, <laughs> another crazy thing that we can do well. kind of worms. It is a whole kind it's of just to, it's just to reminded me about values and stuff. I know we don't get too much into like individual tech stuff, but Microsoft Copilot's coming out, like chat GPT in everything that Microsoft makes, which I think is gonna be absolutely transformational if, if people buy it, which they probably won't because they uh like hundred not kept up speed what's going on. <laughs> and it's it's like thirty quid a month per person. So I don't think most people are gonna take it up. But they, the Microsoft have been like, oh, yeah, we're really big on ethical AI and blah, 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 you know, making sure it's all ethical. But then, again, like just blamange of values, they're launching it to first to enterprise. So you've got to have an enterprise license and be an enterprise customer. So it's like, well, it's like the most, the, if say it is the most transformational thing to happen in work. Microsoft just released a blog post saying small and medium-sized businesses are the lifeblood of our economy. And then you've gone and then give a massive competitive advantage <laughs> to everyone that's already bigger. So it's like, well, that's not ethical. That's like morally wrong. But it's yeah. like, there's no, so if you want to do that, cool. But then don't say that you're doing all these other things. It's, it's, like, well, it's just absolute <laughs> BS. Yeah. yeah. And it's all, it's all these well-meaning, but conflicting. And I think people can sniff bullshit, corporate bullshit, mm. like from a mile mm. away. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. Why are you saying one thing just to appeal to one market and another thing to appeal to another? The whole AI thing is just super interesting. You know, even now mm. you can you can spot a lot of generic social media content, you know, <laughs> written by open uh, you know, chat with GPT and uh, was it Brad or Bard? Which one? <laughs> one of them that oh, Google oh, Brad. Brad. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I think it should have been called Brad. <laughs> it's like a, Google, Brad. Right? It's Google chat. It's yeah. Google AI, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But no, no, no. It all sounds a bit Californian. And here is the tenth. <laughs> I think if I like, had the voice, must like sound like a a West Coast American. I think for all of these things. Um, <laughs> but it, again, it's like. It's it's really interesting, but taking away some of that low value work, it's when we try and use it for our thinking. When when we kind of get into this mindset of computer knows better than we do, and we stop using that creativity, it's like rather than writing an agenda or writing a presentation or writing something good, you go, oh, write me this with these points and tell it in this style, and it's like oh, everything's going to be bland and. I've spent half my life fighting against awful PowerPoint. Just like, you know, think about what your audience are going to take away from this thing. And now we're going to have just generic slides. And ah, uh, that, that's a world I, I think so. It'll be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I agree that that world will be horrible. But if it works as well as they said, I think it'll actually end up with more creative stuff because you're like, 
Because at the moment, people are like can't can't be asked or are too slow to like work PowerPoint, or especially in Excel. Like you know, going back to yeah. <laughs> to bosses, there used to be someone that like got rewarded. Oh, she, you know, this lady was up till two a.m. doing this thing on Excel. It's like you know, she put an extra mile in, gonna get her promoted. It's like, but she she just did because she was rubbish. <laughs> she like could have done the same thing in literally five minutes if she put a formula yeah. in it, but she didn't know how to do it. Whereas that's like taking all of that away. So like it's well, I think it's making knowledge workers actually work more on their knowledge because it's like, well, you need to think up what would be engaging and tell the AI to make a slide that's like, you know, draw me a picture of this because that's got something I really want to convey over in in what I'm talking about or take all these bullet points and actually put them in the notes, but like write, you know, make me something that's engaging mm-hmm. on the slide. I think if you work it like that, then actually oh. you're freeing people up to do more knowledge work and be more creative. But that, yeah, but and I that, agree. That the risk wonderful. is you end up with people just being really lazy of like, make me a PowerPoint, bland PowerPoint, make me the most, the blandest PowerPoint slide you can make because <laughs> I've got a really boring meeting to go no, to. <laughs> just to annoy test, Steve. The acid test here, Gav, is, is if you look on, um, on YouTube now and you put in like chat GPT or whatever, there's tons and tons of, of like how I made a multi million dollar business by three chat gpt prompts it'll just make people more lazy and i worry that they won't use that extra yeah. brain cycles to do something <laughs> good or valuable or individualistic <laughs> we'll just aim for a yeah. really low bar that's my worry and yeah. I, I want to encourage people to be individual to be who they are and special and kind of you know novel and not and just think about yeah if, if you're content is majority you know uh, ai generated why do they really need you they just need a prompt to write the prompt right that's, a prompt machine yeah. yeah that's all it is and then go and write me a prompt that will make a pro uh, make ai make me a million pounds yeah <laughs> yeah exactly it's already, your own, write your own prompts. already it's like the recursive prompts and it's like Prompts yeah. to write prompts, and then you get prompts to write prompts to write prompts. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> like, I'm kind of lost now. <laughs>